So, uh, you know, here we are with the uh, day after the season ended. Obviously not a, you know, a, not a fun day when you're not playing on into the tournament. And I think that's really the, the, the thing that sticks with you is you're one of those 18 teams that, that didn't make it in. Uh, there's four teams, 14 teams in there. Then there's going to be one standing at the end. Uh, so it's, it's frustrating. Obviously, it's disappointing. Uh, anytime you don't achieve your goals, it's, it's really disappointing. Uh, but the finality of it all uh, and just being with the players that one last time today and just, you know, telling them I appreciate uh, them. I appreciate their effort. Uh, I think you see, especially yesterday, those guys played really, really hard. And I think that was a, you know, a great for them as teammates uh, to, to get that win and, and fight for each other. Uh, but ultimately, you know, like I said earlier, didn't uh, achieve our goals. And, and that's frustrating as I sit here, um, obviously. But what we'll do is we'll get some rest, uh, step back, reflect on everything, and look at what we can do better for 2022. And that will be our goal. Thank you, Coach. First question will be from Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Kevin. And first of all, thank you for all your time this year. Really appreciate it. Um, hey, one of the themes we've kind of gotten out of the guys today is um, not necessarily a lack of chemistry, but maybe not the cohesion that you would want on a team. And that could be for a lot of reasons, COVID, new faces, et cetera. Is that, is that kind of what you got from the guys as well? That I mean, obviously, it's something you'd always want to improve upon, but is that something that stands out a little bit? I do think you have to be intentional, Tom. Uh, like you mentioned in these times that, that you are uh, making sure that the guys are around each other and building those relationships. Uh, it's hard, it's harder than ever with right. having two locker rooms and everybody wearing masks and, and those type of things. But uh, I see, I see guys that played hard for each other, you know, and then I see guys that pushed each other and supported each other. Um, but we'll always be intentional about finding ways to uh, come together. I'm sure you had this experience in Minnesota where a team maybe didn't live up to the expectations of the previous year, or what have you. I know it's very hard to win in this league, Kevin. What, what are you going to take away from this year, though, in terms of just the expectations and maybe not matching them that'll serve you best going forward? Well, I, I think for us, you know, it's you have to apply some of these tough lessons you learn. And, and it's a it's a tough lesson. Like uh, we talked about as a team today, our record is eight and nine. You, you, you own it. Uh, you wear it. Um, and it's ultimately short of, of your goals. Um, but moving forward is about finding ways to improve and learning from some of those lessons this year to make sure that we're better situated moving forward. Thank you, Tom. Nate Ulrich is next. Hey, Kevin. Um, are you able to give us uh, kind of a feel for your staff? Do you expect to have everybody back? Yes, I, I don't anticipate any major changes. Okay. And uh, in terms of surgeries, obviously we know Baker on, on January 19th. Is there anybody else uh, we might not know about who you guys have kind of scheduled. I don't have that in front of me, Nate. Nothing's nothing jumps out at me. I, I don't have that right in front of me, though. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about John Johnson III. Um, he commented that he thought that um, you know that there could be some things that that you know the organization could do that would help the players a little bit. And he mentioned them in his exit interviews, and he's he said. Uh, Having a yoga instructor on site uh, is something that he would, you know, like. Is is that not the case? Uh, is it because of protocols? What what is? It kind of seems odd for an NFL team not to have that, but you probably uh, could explain. Yeah, I think you are a little limited there in terms of who you can bring in, Nate, with protocols. Uh, that and we are always going to be searching for new and better ways to do things. Uh, you know, I've mentioned to you guys before want to look at some of the soft tissue uh, injuries that we had and and prevent the ones that are preventable if you can. Um, so certainly we'll look at all those things. And, and you know, I'm always looking for our players to, to, to chime in on, on suggestions and, and definitely want to look into all that stuff. Thanks, Nate. Matt Fontana, you're up. Kevin, what was the most frustrating part of the season? I think, Matt... <laughs> You sit back here and, and you look at and you watch all those games again and uh, 
uh, just missed opportunities. And I think that's kind of how it felt throughout the season. Uh, we weren't consistent enough uh, to, to win consistently, uh, to play 60 minutes of, of good complimentary football. So uh, it's, it's a bunch of different things, um, but ultimately we just uh, didn't uh, take advantage of some of our opportunities. And then I know it's the ultimate hindsight question as we talk about looking back on it, but would you have handled the Baker injury any differently? Is it a lot of people are saying as the season went on that maybe he should have sat down now that it's all done and we know where it's at Any any different things you would have done? Yeah, I think anytime, like I mentioned earlier, Matt, anytime you fall short, you second guess everything. Uh, you really do. Uh, having said that, I just felt every single week I tried to make the best decision for the team with the information available. And, and that's really all I can do week in and week out. Uh, but in general, um, obviously there's a, a, a ton of things you, that we have to look at um, and, and learn from. Thank you, Matt. Jeff Shadell will have our next question. Hey, Kevin, um, when you brought everybody back, your coaches, all the stars on offense, I thought that was great. But looking back, do you think maybe – Things might have gotten a little bit stale. Everybody had already impressed you. So could there be anything to that? I, I don't think so, Jeff. Uh, I, I think this staff pushes each other. Uh, certainly, you mentioned the players. I think if you can have continuity, it's uh, oftentimes a, a bonus in this league, which we know is it's hard to have continuity uh, oftentimes. Um, but I think it's really important to push each other as a staff. And I think it's important to, to get out of our comfort zones. It's one of the things we, we do in, this, in these off seasons is look at other schemes and learn from other coaches and, and meet with other coaches and study other schemes to see if there's anything that we can do to, to give our players uh, a, a better uh, opportunity on game day. Thank you, Jeff. Daryl Ryder, go ahead. Yeah, Kevin, if I remember correctly, because we talked so much about it during the offseason, you know, your message in the spring to your guys was, hey, paper championships mean nothing. All, you know, the talent has to go out there and just and get it done. And unfortunately, the talent didn't get it done this year. Do you think that that might be the most important lesson that the team takes into the offseason with them? Because it's not a situation where you look at your roster and you, you see a bunch of holes everywhere. You've got a good quality roster. So you think that's something that you, you hope your players uh, learn this off season that, you know, talent on paper really uh, doesn't matter much in this league. Well, I think that's true, Daryl, what you're saying for sure. Um, it, it's not something like you mentioned where, you know, on paper doesn't really matter much to us. Uh, I, I don't think I ever got the sense that the players uh, in, or anybody in the building focused on, on that type of thing. Uh, so ultimately, uh, yeah, it's uh, frustrating and disappointing because uh, we're not playing. Uh, bottom line, we just we're not playing in that tournament right now. And, that, and that's hard to uh, hard to stomach because uh, the coaches, the players, uh, these guys put a lot into this. Um, and uh, it, it's hard when when there's finality to it and you're not part of that uh, postseason tournament. The production in the passing game this year has been a been a big focus because it just did see it was it was a struggle. No 600 yard receivers this year. Uh, David led the team with four touchdowns. Uh, so what is your, I guess, postseason dissection of that side of the ball really look like here? Or have you already kind of begun that process and have some things in your mind as far as what went wrong and what you can do to, you know, correct that going forward? Yeah, I think to your point, Daryl, I think this off season and, and spending a lot of time in that area and, and trying to find ways to improve is going to be a huge part of our off season. Uh, it, and, and with anything, as you can imagine, it, it's multifaceted and we have to dig around and, and find those areas where we can improve. And what, what do we do well? Because there are elements of, of the pass game, elements of the run game that we do well. And then there are some that we just weren't good enough at. Now the question becomes, how do we improve them? And I, th I think that's what this offseason and scheme evaluation. Uh, and like I mentioned, studying some uh, other teams, you, you know, you watch college tape, you try to find uh, some some additional schemes to add to the nuance of what you're doing. Thanks, Daryl. Dan Lobby, you're up. 
Hey, Kevin, I want to go back to the um, team chemistry thing, because a couple of guys said that they felt it was sort of like, okay, the offense worries about the offense and the defense worries about the defense. Um, did, did you observe that? And, and do you think that's sort of standard or, or do you think that, you know, there could be a little better crossover there? Yeah, I mean, I didn't observe it. Uh, again, I observed the guys at practice, talk to the guys, watch them play. Uh, I think a little bit of it is it, it's frustrating. You, you know, you, you go eight and nine and you don't make the playoffs and, and guys are frustrated with that. So, uh, but in terms of day to day and, and watching how this team played, uh, I didn't get that sense. And then you, you touched on this a little bit, but I know last year you, you made a big deal of kind of charging your assistance with going out and, and kind of improving somewhere. I, I'm guessing you're going to do the same thing again this year, that that's your message to them again. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think it's, it's what we'll do with the players, Dan, and I think it's important that we do it with our coaching staff as well. Uh, I think uh, none of us are finished products, uh, and if we can improve uh, any small piece of our you know, repertoire, any small piece of how we teach, uh, what we teach, those type of things, uh, I think it will be beneficial for our team. Thank you, Dan. Tony Grossi, go ahead. Uh, okay, Kevin, um, you've explained why uh, you played Baker with the injuries since week two. But do you think you did an adequate job of compensating for those injuries in that the three games he didn't play, you ran the ball more than you threw the ball, and yet the commitment to the run wasn't there when he played? Do you, looking back at it, could you have met in the middle somewhere? Yeah, I think looking back at all of it, Tony, I think will, will be important. Um, and, and like you mentioned, uh, making sure that we're finding ways to be explosive in the run, explosive in the pass. That's always going to be our goal. Uh, to be specific to those uh, three games, uh, I would, I'd would i have to look at exactly the situations we were in and those type of things. But uh, what we're trying to do each game, uh, as, as you know, uh, is to try and find ways to be explosive uh, based on the opponent we're playing as well. And um... – is there, a, do you have any curiosity what it would be like to coach a game without the burden of play calling? Is that a discussion you might have with Van Pelt and others? Yeah, I think all of that, Tony, is stuff that I that we will reflect on, we'll talk about. Um, I will tell you just from a coaching staff communication standpoint, I thought uh, the guys did an outstanding job uh, throughout the year. Uh, making sure that, you know, on those headsets that we're communicating throughout the week that we're communicating, making sure that we're all on the same page. So uh, I think AVP deserves a ton of credit uh, in that regard. Thanks, Tony. Scott Patrick is next. Hey, Kevin, going back to the question about um, your offensive system and the pass offense, um, when you, you're heading into this now, do you kind of figure it's going to be minor changes, right? It's your system. You like it so you know, it's going to be kind of tweaking things or are you going in kind of with an open mind that, hey, we might have to make major changes? Yeah, well, definitely going with an open mind uh, for sure. Now, what that manifests itself and how major the changes are and how obvious they are remains to be seen. Uh, you know, I've been in different offenses. I've had different work with different coordinators with varying uh, philosophies. Uh, so I, I do think you can pivot uh, year to year uh, in terms of certain schemes, certain types of, of offense that you want to run. Uh, but those are the type of things that we'll definitely be open-minded about. And, and I guess just overall, you know, when you come relatively close to making the playoffs, right through a bunch of close games, do you feel like, hey, we don't really need to reinvent the wheel that we just have to kind of make small changes to get where we're trying to go? I think it kind of goes back, Scott, to just being open-minded and making sure that, that we're doing everything in our power uh, to improve our play and improve how we, uh, how we, any part of our operation, if we can get better, we, we want to do that. And to your point, uh, that's where we talked about those missed opportunities because the, the margins are so razor thin uh, and we want to make sure that, that you win a, those close games and, and you're, you know, the difference in winning two more games is, is huge uh, as we've found out. Thanks Scott. Next is Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, Kevin, uh, first of all, in, in terms of Baker's shoulder injury and the harness and all of that, when we talked to all of the players this morning, they were uh, everybody, to, you know, to, to a man was just talking about how injured he was and how he could have shut it down. And most people would have shut it down with that injury. So uh, my first question is, 
how injured was he and how much did the shoulder and the harness and all that have to do with his season? And then also what gives you optimism, uh, maybe even aside from the surgery, uh, that things are going to be better with him in 2022? That you're, <laughs> it's not me. Um, yeah, Mary Kay, I think to the first part of the question, uh, listen, uh, I think we've really talked about it week in and week out. Baker uh, fought through those injuries, uh, was medically cleared to play, uh, you know, each, each of those weeks um, and practiced throughout those weeks and felt good. Uh, I don't think, and you guys have spoken to Baker, I don't think Baker is using any of that as an excuse. Um, and also, uh, you know, not denying um, that guys play through injuries. So uh, he pushed through it. Um, again, I, I know he there are plays and, and moments that he's going to want back, and that's part of, of playing, fo playing football, playing quarterback position, and, and trying to get better. So looking forward to him getting his surgery, uh, spending some time in rehab, and then getting back on it and, and finding ways to improve. Well, what makes you – and what else makes you optimistic that if, if the injury wasn't – uh, this overwhelming thing that wrecked his season. What makes you think things will be better with him next year? Yeah, I, I think Mary Kay, I'd kind of think, I think about it in terms of our entire team. Uh, we were inconsistent at times, uh, you know, and we just have to string better play together, uh, both as a team and, and individually. And I've seen Baker play at a very high level uh, and, and I'm confident he'll, he'll get this surgery and, and he's going to work real hard this off season to bounce back. Thank you, Mary Kay. Jake Trotter, you're up. Well, Mary Kay took my question sort of there. So I'll, I'll try to ask it a different way. Um, so clearly the overall quarterback play wasn't good enough. Any way you value it for you guys to make the playoffs. And, and I know throughout the season, your response has been, you know, we need to be better. I need to be better, uh, not just Baker. But given that we saw him play so much better last season with basically the same personnel around him, the same coaching staff, uh, the same scheme, you know, now that the season is over, you know, how much do you think the adversity he had faced with the injury um, and then maybe that affecting his confidence to some degree as the season went on, not being able to play up to his, his capability um, affected him? And then also, uh, if he doesn't tear his labrum, I mean, are, do you feel like we see the same player we saw last year on the field? You know, I understand the question, Jake. It's just hard to, to, for me to speculate. Um, like I mentioned before, he uh, he, he battled through uh, this injury um, like a lot of the guys do. And I don't say that to minimize how he did that. Um, he pushed through it. And, and I know he wants to perform better. I've seen him perform better. He played winning football for us. Uh, so I fully expect him uh, to bounce back next year. Thanks, Jake. Jason Lloyd, go ahead. Hey, Kevin, when you were hired at the at your first press conference, you said personality is welcome, production is required. This is a very big personality team. There's a lot of guys on, on social media and all that. Are you comfortable with, with, with how much guys are out there and just in general, how much this team seems to be on social media and just some of the stuff that goes on during the season? Yeah, Jason, I would tell you, I don't, I don't know that our team is on, maybe there's a metric for this. I don't know that our team's on social media more than, uh, others, I know that's the generation uh, right now. I think you just have to be very careful. I think everybody has to be careful with social media because uh, there's a lot, like we've discussed before, a lot of it is is background noise. Um, and I think you just got to be careful with what you put out there because once it's out there, it's out there forever. Did you ever get the sense that any of that ever seeped into the locker room? I did not, no. Thanks, Jason. Nate Ulrich, go ahead. Hey, Kevin, um, obviously when Odell left uh, in early November, it was a, a big event for the team. A lot of guys were vocal about wanting him to stay. You know, John Johnson III, Miles Garrett uh, stand out in my mind. Do you think that um, that created division in the locker room that was hard for you guys to overcome and get past? You know, Nate, it's hard for me to think back to November. Uh, all I would tell you with, with, you know, that situation in particular, guys want to be supportive of, of teammates, and, and that was a unique situation. But uh, to, to think of it past that is, is hard for me. 
Thanks, Nate. Marla Reidenauer, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I know you how much you tried to like create the team bond last year when you guys were separated. So did you guys do less of that this year? Or, you know what I mean? It's just as far as the virtual things and all that, maybe does that need to be stepped up in any way or what could you do maybe? Yeah, uh, no, uh, Marla, we didn't do less uh, of, of those type of things. Um, uh, certainly, we'll always try to be intentional about getting our guys around each other uh, to, to build that those relationships. And I think, again, I mentioned it, and it's just important uh, nowadays that, that you do that because you know, you're on these buses and then you're on these airplanes and everyone's wearing masks and then you're meeting virtually. So you're not around each other. You're not sharing meals uh, together. So we just got to make sure that we continue to be intentional about it. When you think back to your career, you know, just of, I guess you'd almost call it the good old days pre COVID. Do you see some, a disconnect just that's almost unavoidable? Yeah, I think, I mean, this isn't unique to us uh, for sure, but uh, pre COVID then also, pre-cell phone, you know, think about the locker room when everybody actually talked to each other. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's it's a different world in that regard. Um, and, and we just got to make sure that that we are always uh, strengthening those relationships uh, in any way we can. Thank you, Marla. Ashley Bastock is next. Hey, Kevin, I know we've talked so much about Baker's injuries and everything, but I kind of want to talk about the same aspect with your offensive line. I mean, looking back on this year, you lose your all pro tackle and Jack Conklin for the year. Jed Wills is playing through an injury since week one. You guys lose your swing tackle in week one. Just having to manage all of that, how much do you think it impacted the offensive performance this year? Yeah, Ashley, I don't know that injuries are part of this game. Every single team uh, faces injuries in some form or fashion. I don't think we're any different. Uh, Jack Conklin's a great player uh, to be without him, uh, you know, is, is not ideal. But I think that's our, our job is, as coaches, our job as players is to next man up and get the, you know, adjust whatever we're doing based on who's in there. Uh, so the, the different lineups, uh, along the offensive front are, are never what you're looking for. You're always looking for those five guys to play all 16, 17 games together. Uh, and that may not be realistic uh, and certainly wasn't for us this season. And I know a lot of times after losses this year, you would bring up that you individually had to be better as a coach, I guess now with everything all, all said and done. Um, what's your gut reaction of things you maybe could have done better this season? Well, I definitely want to spend time looking at that, Ashley, and, and talking to the coaches and and all of us reflecting uh, on what we could have done better. And, and I certainly uh, factor into that. And it's just about making sure we're giving our guys uh, the opportunity to succeed. That's that's what we need to do. Thanks, Ashley. We have time for one more. Scott Petrick. Hey, Kevin, how did you think Baker did from a decision making and seeing the field aspect and, and are those areas? We feel like you're confident that he can make growth next year. Yeah, I think for Baker, for all of our players, Scott, that we're going to outline ways that we feel they can improve and give them uh, improvement plans when we get our hands back on them. And, you know, have, having those off seasons together, I think are important for all these guys. Uh, but, you know, to sit here and, and go down a bunch of things that, you know, he needs to improve. I, I think it's just, all of us, uh, I'd put them all of us in that boat where we, you sit here and, and you're where we are. Uh, it's a full team effort of getting better.